guys, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> this outfit is really exposing my paleness right now. That's upsetting. Anyway, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are going to be talking through my top 20 favorites of the year 2020. Are you guys all thinking what I'm thinking? How are those words even coming out of my mouth? This was the fastest yet slowest year of my entire life. Yet here we are wrapping up the end of it. Goodbye. You're not welcome to come back be gone. So for today's video, we are not only going to be, of course, talking about my skincare favorites, but also hair care favorites, makeup favorites, a couple body care related favorites. And these are the products that I was absolutely obsessed with reaching for nonstop, continue to repurchase and would highly recommend from the year of 2020. So I was really specific about what I allowed to enter into this video. If it was something that I discovered super recently, didn't make the cut, maybe next year not this year. So these are truly things that I've used for a long period of time that I swear by that I think you guys might be interested in. So if you're interested to see what my top 20 favorites of 2020 are, then you are in the right spot. Let's jump right into it. So my first favorite, honestly, I feel like is the product that I've raved about the most on my channel. Ever since I first reviewed it, I cannot shut up about it because it treats my skin so, so well. And I bet a lot of you could guess what the product is. So if you think you know, pause the video and leave your guess in the comments below. Oh, wait a second. Yes, it is the Vanna Cream Gentle Facial Cleanser. This stuff has been a lifesaver for me. I feel like 2020 was the year of irritation in more ways than just my skin. <laughs> the year of my skin being super aggravated and irritated way more than it ever has been in the past for a couple different reasons that I know I've talked about before, but in case you are new here, because of face masks and also because I've had my acne prescriptions shift and change around a little bit and the combination of those things has just really aggravated my skin. So I've had to be super, super focused on the products that I use and the ingredients that are in them to make sure that they're not irritating my skin because a lot of things that generally would be safe for sensitive skin still sting and burn on me this year especially. So this is one of the few cleansers that has never ever done that to me. Every time I use it, there's literally no reaction, no response. It just properly cleanses my skin. I can get a move on with the rest of my skincare routine and not feel like my face is on fire after using it. So this is probably the most basic cleanser that I own. There's really nothing going on with it as far as ingredient highlights aside from glycerin to help to hydrate the skin, but that is why I love it so much. Such a great cleanser. If you have sensitivity, some sort of reaction, a skin condition, well, first of all, see a dermatologist, but also look into Vanna Cream. This brand just in general is amazing, but this cleanser especially, I love you. Okay, so I kind of want to talk about these products in order of application. So after cleansing, I apply serums. So my absolute favorite serum of the year, I forced myself to pick just one, is the Dermatology Needleless Serum. This is the serum that I use as part of my nighttime skincare routine and that has such amazing anti-aging ingredients in it, as well as niacinamide, which I think is the ingredient that probably most people at this point know about if you're someone that's super into skincare because it's such a great ingredient with so many different benefits for the skin. But aside from that, it has other amazing anti-aging ingredients as well and I feel like has really made an improvement in the way that my skin looks. Also, I ran out of this for a while and stopped using it and I felt like I was actually breaking out a lot after that. It could have just been a fluke, who knows? But ever since then, I have not let this out of my sight. I use this every single night. I love it so much. It's a great lightweight formulation, non-greasy. It's perfect. Also, if you guys are interested in purchasing anything from Dermatology, I do have a 20% off discount code that I will leave in the description box below. It's just Abby20. You can use it on their entire site. Voila. Okay, the next product is a moisturizer and I actually had to pick two moisturizers because I couldn't, I couldn't pick between the two. I love them both for slightly different reasons. The first, I feel like you could 100% guess, is the CeraVe PM Facial Moisturizing Lotion. This, it's amazing. If you have normal to oily skin, you need this in your life. The formulation's amazing. It's, I, I'm gonna say amazing 700 times in this video. Brace yourselves, I'm really sorry. I need to expand my vocabulary in that department. Super lightweight, dries down really well, it's not greasy, it's not tacky, yet it still is very moisturizing and leaves me feeling moisturized all day so my skin doesn't start to feel super dry or tight or anything like that. Wears well under makeup, wears well under sunscreen, works as a nighttime moisturizer. It just, I can't say enough good things about this. Plus it has niacinamide in it as well. So 
Normal to oily skin people that are looking for an amazing drugstore moisturizer look no further. And the second moisturizer is also one that I feel like I'm equally as obsessed with, but specifically for those days when my skin is feeling really irritated and sensitive, and it's also from Vanna Cream, their daily facial moisturizer. So this was a newer launch from them this year, and it's a little bit different for Vanna Cream because normally they have such bare bones ingredient labels with really nothing aside from like glycerin, like I said. This actually has hyaluronic acid and ceramides in it, which are some of the key ingredients that are in all CeraVe products. So it's like, mm, interesting, but still it doesn't irritate or sting or burn my skin at all. It's amazing. And I really, really like the formulation. It's slightly thicker than the CeraVe PM facial moisturizing lotion. Still lightweight though. Still, I mean, checks all the boxes that the CeraVe one does as well. Working underneath makeup, under sunscreen, leaving me feeling moisturized all day and night. I'm obsessed. So if your skin cannot tolerate that CeraVe PM lotion, then check this one out instead. Okay, next, we'll finish the kind of PM skincare products and then we'll end the skincare favorites with sunscreen because I have a thing or two to say there. I'm sure some of you guys know what it is. I have to include tretinoin. I have to. Even though my skin has been put through the ringer with my changing acne prescriptions this year, this is specifically my Curology prescription, by the way. I will link my Curology review below. Also, I should say this now, as well as all reviews I have on all of these products, which I have reviews on. So they'll all be linked below and all of these products will be listed in order of mention in my description box. Okay, have to include this because tretinoin is the single most transformative ingredient that my skin has ever encountered. It's amazing. So not only is it something that helps me with my hormonal acne, cause I'm very acne prone, but it has been so incredible at helping to smooth my skin, just make my skin healthier, glowier, more youthful, holy, holy. If you can get your hands on tretinoin, I would highly recommend it. Best anti-aging ingredient of all time, of course, aside from sunscreen, which is to protect, this is to treat. So <sighs> tretinoin, baby, obviously. The next product is the CeraVe Healing Ointment. So this has officially made its way into my top 20 favorites. I debated on this one for a little bit because it was probably one of the most recent finds out of all of these products that I'm sharing, but I had to include it because it has been such a major help in my skincare routine because of all the irritation that I've been experiencing. So if you're familiar with what Vaseline feels like, this is exactly like that. Slightly different. I actually do think that this has a nicer formulation because there's other ingredients in this as well, aside from just petrolatum. And it is so good. If you have cracked, chafed, dry, irritated skin, something like this can be super helpful at actually just acting as a protective seal on the skin so that your skin is able to properly heal as quickly as possible. Oh my gosh, thank God. Like, I don't know what I would have done without this. I don't know. Not good, I don't wanna know. Okay, so the last category for my skincare favorites is sunscreen, and I have two different sunscreens. One of them is the Purito Centella Unscented Sun Green Level Sunscreen. I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this video have already heard all about the drama with this. I don't even wanna call it drama, that's not the right word, but scandal, that's not, I don't know. The issues surrounding this sunscreen. So there was definitely speculation for a while that this was incorrectly marketed as far as the SPF rating. So I actually don't know that I knew this before, but Purito claimed that this was an SPF 84, which is insanely high. And there was a lot of speculation about that because the sunscreen filters that were used were not in super high concentrations. And also just the formulation of this is so amazing. It feels like it's not even a sunscreen. And that's because that's actually kind of true. So there were some tests conducted to try to address those concerns and speculations. And the tests actually found that in fact, this is not an SPF 84, it's actually only an SPF 19. Knife to the chest. Which is so upsetting because I know that this was so many people's favorite sunscreen because of how amazing it felt, because of the fact that it didn't even feel like sunscreen, it just felt like a moisturizer, has really nice healing and calming ingredients in it. No white cast, lightweight, non-greasy, like everything you could ever want in a sunscreen, this had. And there's a couple different problems with the fact that it's an SPF 19. Of course, the most obvious one is the fact that what Purito was claiming was not actually true. At this time that I'm filming this video, 
They have come out with their initial statement, basically apologizing for the swirl and also saying that they were going to conduct several tests behind the scenes and are going to let us know as consumers what the results of those tests are. And I have to say, I do appreciate the fact that Purito responded in a professional, serious manner. They acknowledged the fact that this is a big concern and not okay. And they let us know exactly what they're going to do and that they're going to update us when they have an update, basically. So I don't want to discount that because I do appreciate that, but obviously, the fact that a brand is not being honest about something like that is super discouraging. And for some that may just feel like it's not really a big deal, like, oh my gosh, it's just skincare, who cares? This is not something like, oh, a product says that it has glycerin in it, but it actually doesn't. Sunscreen is a really big deal. I immediately thought of anyone who had been relying on this with a history of skin cancer or just a predisposition to skin cancer, and I just felt so stressed for them. I can't imagine that feeling. If you were someone that maybe had a precancerous mole removed or you already have had skin cancer and you were using this, that's horrible because there is a big difference between SPF 19 and SPF 84 or SPF 19 and 30 to 50. So I don't use anything that's under an SPF 30 on its own. I never rely on anything under that for adequate sunscreen protection. So this is no longer something that can fit into my top 20 favorites, even though it originally was because I made this list before all of this unfolded. So I wanted to address that because I have gotten some questions already from you guys asking what my thoughts are. Until we know more from Purito themselves, this is not a product that I can continue to recommend. What a bummer. So in place of that, I did add a new sunscreen that easily is one of my all-time favorites as well. So it's not that much of a loss because it's, I mean, it's great too, but for slightly different reasons. So now I have two sunscreen favorites that are both from Dermatology. I'm sorry, I feel like sometimes that's annoying when I talk about the same brands a lot, but I love them so much. Their products are so good. Their formulations are unlike anything else, which I know I've said a hundred times, but that's especially true when it comes to sunscreen. There are so many sunscreens out there that are thick, cakey, leave a white cast, they feel greasy, they don't dry down. I don't like any of that. Dermatology sunscreens are none of those things. So their tinted moisturizer SPF 46 is my first recommendation. So that is a tinted sunscreen. It's very hydrating. It definitely leaves a glowy finish to the skin. The reason that I love that one so much aside from the finish is that the tint is more neutral, I think, than other sunscreens that I've used that lean really, really warm slash orange and undertone. So if you're on the lookout for a more neutral leaning tinted sunscreen that's also not too dark, just has a slight tint, little bit of a glow, and has a really nice glowy, dewy finish, then definitely check out their tinted moisturizer. That one's amazing. Side note, that is a combination sunscreen though. So if you have super sensitive skin and your skin does not tolerate in organic filters, then that won't be for you. But otherwise, it's amazing. I personally don't have any irritation in using it. I love it so much. And then the other sunscreen that has officially now replaced the Purito one and is my recommendation instead of that is their Broad Spectrum SPF 45. So this is also non-tinted, like the Purito sunscreen, also a combination sunscreen. And while it checks all the same boxes as the tinted moisturizer as far as being lightweight, non-greasy, drying down really well, working well underneath makeup. This is even better for those of you that have really oily skin because it's not nearly as glowy and dewy on the skin. Not super matte like an Australian gold, but it just dries down really well, kind of like a semi-matte finish. It's amazing. So that's my other recommendation since Purito is no mo. Okay, now let's move on to hair care, and I have a shampoo and conditioner that I'm going to include in the same spot as my first hair care favorite because they go together. They're from the same brand, Olaplex. It's the number four bond maintenance shampoo, bond maintenance, and number five bond maintenance conditioner. I think these are amazing, and I actually discovered these in 2020. So if you're wondering, wait, what about Pureology? That's why I'm choosing these over Pureology because I've used Pureology for years. This was a really exciting 2020 find for me and I love these, I love them. So I think that these are great if you're someone that has damaged hair from color, heat, anything, hard water, and you're really looking for something that's going to help to repair that damage, definitely look into Olaplex because they have a key ingredient in all of their products that's specifically designed to help to heal that repair essentially and heal any sort of bond damage that you have. So kind of 
refuse those broken bonds. So they actually have chemists that work for them that created this signature ingredient. You won't find it in any other product. It's a patented ingredient specifically in Olaplex products. And I do think it's amazing. I really think it's helped my hair. So love you Olaplex. But I can't not talk about Curology in this video because you guys know I love that brand and this is easily my favorite post shower detangling all in one spray. It's called their Color Fanatic Multitasking Hair Beautifier for perfecting color treated hair. So this basically is an all in one spray, like I said, that covers so many bases. So on the back, it says it helps to prime, protect, and perfect the hair. So some of the benefits include helping to prevent split ends and breakage, it strengthens the hair, protects against heat damage and environmental damage, it smooths, creates silkiness, shine, etc. The list goes on. This stuff is so good. Love it. Highly recommend it. So because I am making YouTube videos for you guys and reviewing products, I have started to use a lot more hair care products, but I've used this also for so long and I swear by it, you guys, it's amazing. So highly recommend. I also did get a question asking if you can use this if you don't have color treated hair. Yes, you don't need to have color treated hair to use and love this thing. The next product is from Kerastase and it's their Lincroyable Blow Dry Miracle Reshapable Heat Lotion. So at first I just got this because it's supposed to be a heat protectant and also just supposed to help with the blow dry process, make your hair look nicer. Definitely does all of those things and I really like the way that my hair looks when I use this. But the other really unique benefit is that it's supposed to make restyling easier, which is very enticing for someone like me because my hair does not hold a style overnight. I just don't have that kind of hair texture. I have fine to normal strands. I just have a lot of hair, so it kinks easily. My curls fall. It's unfortunate. So if you're someone like that that needs to restyle your hair maybe the next day, look into this. I really, really do like it and think that it helps. And I think that it just makes my hair look really nice and soft and shiny. And the formulation is really nice too. It's not too thick and heavy. It doesn't leave kind of a weird residue in the hair like some products like this do. I just really love this. And last, but certainly not least in the hair department, I kind of cheated here because technically I have three products but they're all as part of the same process and I apply them all at the same time and I couldn't just pick one because I feel like all three really, really help me. So they are from The Ordinary and these are oils that you can apply on your face as well, but I personally use them on my hair. This is something that I just started doing in 2020 with these oils specifically and I really feel like it's made a huge difference in the health of my hair and just also again, how nice and soft and shiny it looks. So I showed you guys how exactly I apply these and use these in my weekly hair washing routine video. I'll link that below if you haven't seen that yet, but essentially I apply these to my hair ponytail length every single week the night before I wash my hair. I swear by that technique and the difference that it's made in my hair. And I really feel like I can truly talk about this and have a fair perspective because I've lived in a couple different places with very damaging hard water. The first time was when I was in college in Madison, Wisconsin, the water there, trash. Every hairstylist basically told me about it and confirmed, but I mean, my hair showed, my hair was a disaster. I wasn't doing anything then to really take care of my hair because I didn't really know what to do and it showed. So I have to do a lot to keep my hair looking the way that it looks now to keep it healthy. And this is one of the most crucial steps. So. First, I just started off using their 100% organic cold pressed Moroccan argan oil and 100% cold pressed virgin marula oil. So these were the first two that I started to use. So I would say if you just wanted to pick two and didn't want all three, I would start off with these two. I think they're amazing and that duo is great, but I also added this oil and I really like the combination of all three. So it's their plant derived squalane. Originally I got this for my face, but my face does not love squalane oil. So I decided to add it to the duo to make it a trio and it's something that oh, something about these three ingredients together my hair just loves so all three of them are going to help to nourish condition soften add shine etc they're replenishing they're a great source of fatty acids i don't have to say anything else love you okay so that's it for hair now let's move on to makeup i'm so excited for this because i feel like i just don't get to talk about makeup very often on my channel and i love makeup so much i know it's not the trendy thing anymore but makeup for me is more than just making myself look a different way obviously that's part of it don't get me wrong i feel way more confident with makeup on but the actual application process is probably the only time of day where i have guaranteed calm 
kind of sad, but true. It's seriously the only time that I can fully decompress and relax and just be present in what I'm doing. So it's a lot more to me than just putting on some fun lipstick colors, you know? I honestly feel giddy when I try new makeup and when I find something that I love. I love it. So anyway, we're gonna talk about makeup and my first favorite, which is a foundation. This completely took me by surprise this year. It is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. This blew me away. I remember watching reviews on it probably a few years ago now and people just talking about how it smelled like paint. So that freaked me out. I always stayed away from it because of that, but I dug into the ingredients and there's nothing in there that's concerning, no essential oils. So ingredient label works for me. And aside from that, it's such a flawless finish. So this is definitely not going to be for those of you that don't like a full coverage look because it's full coverage, but also just not in a way that looks like you're wearing a ton of makeup in my opinion. It just makes your skin look amazing. So I would say it kind of has a semi-matte finish because it's not drying, but it's definitely not a dewy glowy finish. It's, if you have oily skin, normal to oily skin, and want something that's flawless and full coverage, this is it. Like this beats a lot of high-end foundations for me. It's that amazing. Doesn't feel heavy and cakey for me. Controls my oils throughout the day without being drying and settling into weird lines. <sighs> If those things sound right up your alley, you have to look into this because I love it. And I swear almost every time I get asked in the comments what foundation I'm wearing, I'm wearing this one. Next, Amazonian clay blushes from Tarte. These are my all time favorite holy grail blushes. They are beautiful. I feel like blush is such an overlooked category that should not be because it is just the best way to make your face look fresh and healthy and glowy without adding a strobe of highlight to it. I love it, but blush can be done really wrong and I'm really picky about my blush formulations. They need to have kind of a soft pigment to them that's buildable. I've tried a lot of blushes that are pretty shades, but they are so intensely pigmented that they just don't blend out. Something like this that has that soft pigment that's easy to build and blend is just my favorite kind of blush ever and this formulation is everything to me. I love it and their colors also, a huge part of why I love these, are so beautiful and flattering. I feel like they just have the best freshly sun-kissed without having a sunburn look to them. They just, I feel like this is the type of thing that doesn't really look like makeup. I mean, unless obviously you build it up a ton, it just looks so pretty. So I think my all-time favorite shade from them is Seduce. Oh, this is the perfect perfect pink without being too pink. It's like a pinky beige. Another one that's amazing is Sensual. <clears throat> they have kind of flirty names. What the heck? And Exposed. I mean, they all look really similar in the pan, but they do definitely pull differently on the cheeks. So tart blushes, you guys can't get enough. Next is a highlighter that I have not been able to stop reaching for all year and it's from Ofra. I know that this was one that was really hyped a while ago. It's their Rodeo Drive highlighter and it is so, so beautiful. It's a really intense highlight if you want it to be, but it also doesn't have to be. It's not one of those that just looks like a chunk of powder sitting on the face. It really, something about it, it just blends into the skin so beautifully. I'll show you guys. Oh my gosh. I love this so much. Just the glow it gives is beautiful and the undertone is stunning as well. I feel like this is my perfect undertone for the majority of the year when I don't have a deep self tan on because it still has that kind of golden tint to it, but it's not too deep in gold and it has like champagne in there as well. It's just... It's so good. I love this stuff so much. So this is actually just the mini version. I like that they have a mini option available because they also have bigger pans that I feel like just me as somebody who really likes to test out a lot of different makeup would probably not get through all that quickly, but nonetheless, it's amazing. Next is a mascara that is my favorite mascara of all time. I have tried so many mascaras, drugstore, high-end, different shapes, sizes, doesn't matter. This is my all-time favorite. It's the Maybelline Lash Sensational, and there's a few different reasons why I love this. The first is the shape of the wand. Something about this exact shape with these plastic bristles is life-changing for my lashes. It lifts them so well. I don't have to curl my lashes. Separates, lengthens, 
doesn't weigh them down because it's not too heavy and wet of a formulation, but it's not too dry. It's just perfect. The best mascara ever. However, I do always have to use a second mascara with it. I always use two mascaras. This plus something that is thicker and has a natural haired bristle to it so that it actually adds more volume to the lash. The one that I usually use with it is either the Lancome Monsieur Big Mascara or the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise if you want a drugstore alternative. So both of those are great, especially combined with this, but dang, if this is ever discontinued, I will freak out. I've had visions of that and then I've had to like purchase a hundred before it goes out of stock and then the fear that they'll go bad and dry out before that happens. That can't happen. Maybelline, please do not ever get rid of this. Two more makeup favorites that are both in the lip category. So let's start off with the lipstick, which is also one of my all-time favorites. It's MAC Modesty. This, I'll show you guys. Am I serious? What is this? Can you guys see that? This is the perfect beigey neutral pink. It's not too warm and orangey. It's not too purpley. It's just right in between, which makes it really flattering on a lot of different people. And it's beautiful. If you need your perfect everyday nude that has a little bit of pink in there, this is your girl. So this is the creme sheen formulation from MAC, which I really love because I think there's something so pretty and flattering about a neutral pinkish beige like this that's not too intensely pigmented or matte. I feel like people that have large lips naturally or via lip filler can get away with really intensely pigmented lipstick a lot easier than someone like me who doesn't naturally have very big lips because I feel like smaller lips just cling onto pigment and make it look darker. Is that just me? And especially with matte lipsticks as well, it's just like, ooh, a little bit startling. So something like this I think is so fresh and pretty and oh my gosh. So I can wear this on its own. I can wear it paired with maybe a deeper lip liner. I love putting gloss on top of this. It's something that I can definitely transform a little bit. But in any way that I wear it, I'm obsessed with it. And the other reason I love this is because it works on so many different people. So out of all the brides that I worked with in my freelance bridal makeup, what am I trying to say? I'm a freelance makeup artist. I work with brides. Out of all the brides that I worked with this year, only one did not choose this lipstick. So I feel like that goes to show kind of how universally flattering it is. Obviously, lipstick will look different from person to person depending on undertone and skin tone, but something about this just works on so many different people. So <sighs> MAC Modesty, thank God for you. And my last makeup favorite is a lip gloss from Buxom. They easily have my all-time favorite gloss formulation. I love lip gloss and I especially love Buxom lip glosses. So this is in the shade Sugar. It's beautiful. It's kind of, kind of similar to MAC Modesty, but has a little bit more beige brown in it. It's beautiful. I'll show you it on top of MAC Modesty and then also on its own. I look like a three-year-old. Okay, so here's it on top of MAC Modesty and then here's it by itself. Oh, I love it. It's such a beautiful color and I feel like really transforms any lipstick that I wear without, again, completely altering the color. So highly recommend. My other favorite from them is White Russian, but this one I think wins. Okay, we've officially made it to the last category, which is body care, and I only have two items to talk about because I don't really have key must-have favorites in the body care category that I continue to repurchase. I feel like I'm a little bit less product loyal in this category. I don't know if that's just me. Are you guys like that too? Except for these two products. The first is from Hemp's. Hemp's absolutely is my all-time favorite body lotion formulation. It's so good. So <laughs> calm down. This is their Triple Moisture Herbal Whipped Body Cream. And this scent, what is this one? I'll list the scent below, of course. This is mm, second place for my favorite scent. My first favorite from them is their Sweet Almond scent. Oh, so they have such good smell. Some of them are definitely too sugary and too sweet for me, but I'll list my favorite scents from them below. Beautiful. It's definitely a true whipped formulation without being too thick and heavy. It's just, oh my gosh, these are so good. So obviously these do have fragrance in them. So if you're someone that can't use fragrance on your body, this will not be for you, but otherwise, if that's okay with you, you have to. They're so good. Definitely not something for 
intensely cold dry months on its own if you really suffer from dry skin because it's not that body butter formulation but otherwise any other time of year holy crap and my last favorite is a self tanner that I feel like I also didn't shut up about this year. It's the Tanologist self tanner. So this is their self tan mousse. I have the shade dark in all of their products. I've used their mousse, I've used their water, I've used their drops and I just think they're such a good brand. The reason why I love these products is because they don't have a color guard. So obviously you can see the formulation is clear. So when you apply it, you don't have that really dirty looking <laughs> color all over you. So it's something that you can apply and actually go out in public in while it develops, which is one of the reasons why I love it. But there are many others. I'll link some of my self tan videos below where I talk about this and show you guys the color and how it develops. It's amazing. So good and just such a good, not super orangey color as well. Some self tanners just look so intensely orange. This one does not highly recommend. So that's officially it. We have made it to the end of this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. So curious to hear what your favorites of 2020 were and if we have any of the same favorites. Let me know in the comments below. And I mean, if there's things that I didn't talk about, please still let me know because maybe I need to try them out, you know? Obviously I have so many other products that I love as well, but when I had to really slim down the list, these were my final picks. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. All of those things really help to support me on my channel. And I feel like that is the perfect segue to say a quick thank you so, so much for all of you that have been so sweet and kind and supportive throughout this past year. Aside from the state of the world, this has been the most insane year for me and something that I honestly never knew would happen or never knew if it would ever become a reality, which is YouTube and growing a channel. So I started the year, I think with, I mean, maybe like 500 subscribers. And to think that just a year later, I have over 50,000 is insane to me. And I know it's definitely not the quickest growth story of all time. And there are creators who seem to kind of boom to a million overnight, but Hopefully one day we will get there. YouTube has always been my dream. I love product and creating content more than anything. And I just feel so blessed to be able to do this with a growing subscriber family. You guys honestly mean so much. And I try to read and respond to as many of your guys' comments as I possibly can because connecting with you guys is so important to me. I apologize if I ever don't get to one of your comments because it is starting to become a lot to keep up with as this channel continues to grow. But I'm gonna do my best to keep up with it because I just want you guys to know that you guys are important to me. So, thank you guys so much. This has been an insane year. I cannot wait to see what happens with my channel in 2021. Hopefully we can hit that 1 million mark. I gotta shoot for the stars, you guys. I know we have a ways to go, but let's just put that out there. I've officially said it. You guys know that that is my goal. Okay. So if there's anything else that you would like to see from me next, leave that request in the comments as well. Otherwise, my next video will be up in a few days, so stay tuned for that, and until then, I hope you have a great few days.